All right. Hello, hello. Welcome back to the Purpose and Pixie Dust podcast. I am Lindsay Dollinger, and I am so excited to have Christy Connor on the show again. This is her her second time on the show, um, and I think she's only the second person to ever be back on the show twice, but I love Christy so much. I respect everything that she does and has to say. She's super knowledgeable, and even if you listened to her before, I know you're going to learn a lot today. So Christy, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be like the second person to be here the second <laughs> time. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. And you do all the things. So super quickly, tell us who you are, what you do, and how you started doing it because I love your story. Okay. Um, my name is Christy Connor, and I am the self-proclaimed visibility queen. And the reason that I chose visibility as my one thing and the thing that I wanted to be known for was because... I used to be really invisible and I used to be petrified of video and I was so scared of video. Long story short, I had a business uh, back in 2012. It was a skincare business. We made skincare in our basement and my biz my partner, my business partner literally did everything she could to get us visible. And I prayed to God every night, please don't let them select us for Shark Tank. Please don't let them select us for the news interview. Like I was blocking everything she was trying to do because I was petrified. I was that scared of video. And so when that business ended, it's the business we did everything wrong in. That's my famous line for that business. Everyone um, has one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I learned how to do everything wrong in that business. And then I had my own business, which is all me. Right. And I was growing really, really well from referrals, but I wanted to start creating programs. And the thing I was missing and the thing that was nagging in the back of my head is you're not visible. But I went ahead and tried to launch a program. It flopped because nobody knew who I was. So it really was a great reminder and lesson that I got to show up. Um, so uh, I I tried to do all these workarounds to not get on live video. This is like 2016 because, you know, 2016, uh, the video, live video, was there was no TikTok and reels and even stories back then. So I started getting visible and I did it the cheater way, Facebook lives, go to uh, privacy settings, only me. Which, by the way, side note, like Instagram allows you to do that now, which I think is the coolest feature ever. You can literally what? say test live. It is the coolest freaking thing. I'm just like, I didn't know that. where was this back in 2016? But anyhow, yeah. um, so I called it cheater lives for about 10 times. Then I finally got the nerve and said, this is ridiculous. You're cheating and you need to do this. And so I taught my audience how to create jello shots because it was the only thing that helped me overcome my fear. My biggest fear was what people are going to think of me. Um, am I going to mess up? Am I going to say, um, way too much? Are people going to make fun of me? Like so many fears like that. And it's just crazy. Looking back now, it's crazy that all the work I've done that I allowed that to bother me, but it, it, that was my truth in that moment. And so, uh, so yeah, I started getting on video even more, really started taking it seriously at the end of 2018 and 2019. And here we are today. Um, and most of my business now is I and I look at this because I know you talk to a lot of people who have full time jobs like my done for you side of my business was like my full time job. Right. Because I had to be on. I had to do calls. You know, there were certain hours my clients needed me to be working for them. So it's like I almost like got rid of that whole side of my business. And it truly is more program based where I can help multiple people at one time and mentorship and coaching and, and program based. So it's been a, a total journey, but that is the long story short. Story. I love it so much. And I love, well, and I, I'm pretty sure I met you in 2015 or 2016. Cause I remember, I feel like the end of you having the product in your basement. And I remember you hopping on one of our mastermind calls and being like, what do you guys think of the visibility queen? Yeah. <laughs> like as the name and like getting started. So it's been a super cool journey to watch you. Um, I'm just curious, what does your former business partner think of you being on video all the time and like this huge giant shift that you've done? Do you know? Have, have you asked her? I actually haven't asked her. We're still friends. We're not obviously yeah. when you work with somebody every day, like you're a lot closer. So we're not as right. close as we used to be. But it's funny because I know she's seen my yeah. story. I know she's seen me talk about it. But yeah, I used to totally call myself out. So it was never yeah. her. It was always me. Mm -hmm. Um 
but yeah, it was just, I'm yeah, just I, honestly, I'm, I'm going to have to ask her one day because that's a very great question to ask. Yeah, I was just, it. yeah, it just like came to my mind. I was like, oh my gosh, she must have seen this like complete 360 in you and like, yeah. and like what is happening right now? <laughs> Who is this version of Chrissy? Right. Um, exactly. So I love how you basically preach because you have done this creating raving fans. Mm -hmm. So, and and you use those exact words. So that's why I have it in the title. Um, Can you explain a little bit what that is, why that's so important and how you help other people do that? So the term raving fans basically is having a hot audience is the way I look at it. So we all have cold people that follow us, right? Especially with reels and TikTok. I mean, people can swipe through and see us all the time and just kind of like uh, move on. Um, and then we have warm audience and we have a hot audience that's ready to buy. And those are the raving fans. And I believe that creating raving fans is a combination of things. First of all, I believe everyone should be known for one thing. And I used to be so petrified of this because being known for one thing means I can't do other things, which is the biggest lie that we tell ourselves. You can do multiple things. Just because I call myself the visibility queen doesn't mean I don't do other things. I've really branched out in my business. And so I believe you're known for one thing. You really are positioned as the expert and authority And I'm not saying to the world, but that person, right? The people that are following you, the people that are watching you. And then we create this brand is the best way I guess I can explain it, that who are you? Because every piece of value that we give on social media, someone can Google that. Why should they listen to you over Google? Because you have a heartbeat, because you have a soul, because you have a story, because you have experience. And I think a lot of times when it comes to getting on social media, we're so robotic, right? And we share all the value and all the tips and all the, but we don't put our own spin on it. We don't put our own own story on it. You know, this is, I love chat GPT, but the problem is we're losing the heart. We're losing us. We're losing how we would say things because we think chat GPT can say it better. And don't get me wrong. I use the tool. However, I don't lose me in the tool, if that makes sense. Like, can you make me help me say this better? And, you know, and then edit the words that I would never say. And so I think really showing our audience who we are, not just in the stories and the experiences and the breakdowns and the breakthroughs and the comebacks and the failures, like all those are great too. But also, what do you do for fun? Like, who are you outside of your business? And, you know, I think that was really hard for me too, because even though I was willing to get visible at first, I was scared to bring people into my life. Like, right. I don't know if I want people into my life. So that was a big thing that I got to overcome. But the more I have done it, the more people feel related. They feel relatable to what I have to say, right? Like I'm obsessed with my dog. It's an unhealthy relationship (laughs) to say, right? I show my dog all the time in my content. People that have that same relationship with their dog, they understand it, right? And (laughs) what else can you incorporate into your content that maybe has nothing to do with your business but it has something to do with you. It shows what you're passionate about. It shows what you love. And I think when we do that well enough in a combination, that is truly how we create raving fans. Um, Some, uh, there's a term that a lot of people don't know about, but the more that you show up and the more that you're visible, it's called a parasocial relationship. And so basically people feel like they know you, but they've literally never met you. And so that's what you're constantly doing when you create raving fans. People feel like they know you. Like, yeah. You've shown me your life. You've shown me your expertise. You've shown me the, the the failures in your life and the faults you've had in your life. Like you've really, really talked about it. And it's it's really like, I think when I got on social media and started talking to everybody, like these are just my friends. This is how I would talk to my friends. It just was a game changer. Mm, I love that so much. Now, how what would you say to the woman listening to this? Who's like, I really want to do that, but I'm unsure of how to mix that in with my business content on social media, because I hear that all the time from women. Um, they're like, well, I feel weird hopping from, you know, join my team, do this thing. Here's this here. I'm posting about, you know, so what, what sort of advice would you give for the woman who is having those thoughts come up right now? I think it's kind of like, if you go, most people, if you go to a networking event, 
you find commonalities with people. But if we don't like, if we don't find, if we can't find a commonality with somebody, it may be hard for us to connect with them, right? So give yourself permission to start. And at first, it will feel kind of weird. Like, oh, like, why am I doing this? Right. But then it becomes just so natural. And I think too, it helps if you follow somebody that actually does this, if they bring you into your life, like you can see how they start like integrating it and naturally adding it in, you know, like at first I would find things that were personal to me, but I could correlate my business like a story, right? Like when I was working out really consistently, working out is like the easiest thing to like <laughs> show like in your business, right? An example. But I would like talk about like how working out every day is like growing your social media following. Like I would try to find correlations like that. And it's not always possible, but just bringing people in. People want to know who you are. And I think the thing is, is that if you think because none of us think that we're really that exciting. We all think that we live boring lives, but we are more interesting to other people than we give ourselves credit for. And if we show up and be like, like my life is exciting, right? Like it is like, it, it may be boring and it may be mundane sometimes, but to me, I love my life. And if you show up with that energy, and I'm not saying you have to bounce off the wall or anything like that, but if you show up with the energy, I love my life and I wanna share it with you, it's just gonna land totally differently. I love that. I 100% think it's about energy and like what also what your intention is when you're putting it out there because I feel yeah. that resistance a lot from people. I'm like, okay, this person is literally just wanting sales all the time, all the time. Like you can like feel that sort of energy versus yeah. like I am sharing to genuinely share and connect with you. Yeah. Whole different vibe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And sometimes it's just like sitting with yourself and asking, what is my intention? Mm. What is my intention yeah. with this? Because yeah. Just switching that, that mindset shift will land differently with your audience too. And, and it may have you going and editing something that you said, but I think it's huge just to sit with yourself and ask yourself that question. I love that. Now talking about selling and intentionally selling, I have heard you say many times on your podcast as well, which we will, um, I'll get the name of all that at the end so everyone can follow it. Cause I love your, your, uh, your, their daily shows, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say, I'm pretty sure they're daily Monday through Friday or are they weekends too? No. Oh, okay. no. No, I was going to say that's, that's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> uh, well, it's a lot anyway, Monday through Friday, but anyway, you talk about selling every day. What does that mean? And what could that look like if it's not like, well, I'm, I'm not going to put words in your mouth. So what could that look like when you're telling people to sell every day? Okay. So first we have to go back to past Chrissy who believed in this 80, 20 rule. And then prided myself that I believe in the 90 10 rule for myself and I only sell 10% of the time. So this was this big mindset thing. And I think it was fear. And I think women especially were afraid to sell. And I think I've been thinking about this a lot lately because women, we do so many things for free, right? In our, whether we're a wife or a partner or a mom or a fur mom, like we just do these things, right? It's it's like, what do they say? Like if you got paid to do what you do, it's like $400,000 or something like that a year. I don't know. But we do these things for free. And so it's really hard for us to get over that mindset shift that now I'm going to sell myself or now I'm going to sell something, right? And I'm asking people to give me their hard earned money and all these things. And so it was a lot of mindset shift there, but also it was the, the, how I was taught, right? Like I was taught 80, 20, 80, 20, 80, 20. And I think I had to get over this thing where, first of all, when I was putting out one piece of content a day compared to 15 to 20 pieces of content a day, that's a huge difference. First of all, I'm not saying anybody listening needs to put out 15 to 20 pieces of content a day. I call myself the visibility queen. I'm on every platform. It's way different. But, um, but you know, I was like, wait a minute. First of all, nobody's telling Target to give you value when you walk in the door before you go spend your hard earned money, right? Nobody's, nobody's doing that for you at Target. So it was like this shift, like we're businesses, we are meant to make money. We are meant to make money. And I think too, believing deep down inside, whatever you sell is life-changing. And I don't even care if it's nail polish. It can be life-changing. We may have to ripple out 
But if you give somebody confidence that feels like that they feel like a million bucks, or you tell me that's not life changing, that is 100% life changing. So I think believing that what you do is life changing, believe that what you're selling is going to change somebody's life, make their day easier, save them time, save them money, whatever it is, having that conviction in my personal opinion, means that I can't not tell you because I'm doing a disservice if I choose to keep my mouth shut today and not offer you what's available to you. Oh, I love that. I love that so much. And it, yeah, it goes in even deeper into that transformation instead of like just selling the product yeah. for flat what it is, like what are those people going to get out of it? And right. I know that was a huge mindset shift for me too. Like, oh, I need to completely change my messaging. <laughs> Yeah. And I think it's like, you know how we say don't build relationships with an expectation. Like I build relationships with no expectation in return. I also sell and offer you and invite you to the thing with no expectation in return. I believe that whoever needs this is going to is going to say yes to that. Right. I believe it doesn't mean I just like throw it up and don't do anything else. I still take radical responsibility and take the actions that I need to take. But I also believe that whoever this is for, it will land and they will see it. But if I choose to hide and not show up often enough and talk about it enough, just like my content, just like everything else, they may not have seen that one piece of content. So it's my job to remind people over and over and over when I'm launching something, when I'm selling something um, in a variety of ways, basically. So sometimes I'm seeding it, meaning I'm like, I talk about this more in uh, Omni VIP, like maybe just saying something quick like that. Or saying, hey, the door is closed in X, Y, Z days, right? Like, you know, sign yeah. up now before the price increases or we're almost sold out. Like using like terms like that, as long as they're true, are also great to use as well. I love that. So you have completely changed. I don't even want to say maybe how you've launched, but maybe even the type of products you have um, with doing, are they monthly? Is it a monthly masterclass type deal? Is that what you do now in addition to Omni and all the other programs? So all of my monthly programs are included inside of Omni VIP or my inner right. circle, but I also sell them a la carte. So people can buy mm. them as one offs um, or you get them inside the membership. But if you're in the membership, there's also things that you get that you can't buy separately. So, right. um, so yeah, so basically I sell and launch at least all the time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm always selling, but I'm launching at least once a month and okay. it's, it's made it not scary. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about that because okay. I hear people say all the time, you know, I hate launching or, you know, you know, launching is the worst, all these things about launching. I can do one or two launches a year and then I'm completely spent. What, what has made that difference for you in your business? Number one, when I used to launch, I became a different person because I thought there was this thing called launch mode and I got to be in launch mode and I got to be on and I got to do this and I got to do that and I got to sell and I got to blah, blah. And I think when I realized it's just me, like it's just me showing up. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, as I did this mindset shift, you're going to hear a lot of mindset shifts in this mm -hmm. podcast episode, Love it. but I did this mindset shift that launching is just me getting visible about the thing that I'm talking about. So mm -hmm. in my mind, launching is just a part of my visibility strategy. It's just a part of my um, my offers visibility strategy, right? If I don't show up and talk about it, nobody knows who it is. One of my favorite posts that so many people identified with was it said, you, I'm not, I, nobody's buying. It says you, nobody's buying. And it says reality. You've only talked about it three times. <laughs> Yep. Been there, done that. <laughs> you know? And, and so many people are like, oh, my, I feel like you're calling me out right now. I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm calling my, my past version of me out because that's how I was. And we make it this big thing and we make it exhausting, more exhausting than it needs to be. And we make it this stressful thing when it's like the best piece of advice I was ever given is you should be the same person when nobody's buying and when everybody's buying. Mm. And when you think about it like that, you should be the same person when you're in launch mode and when you're not in launch mode. Yeah, Maybe yeah. I'm showing up a little bit more, but I'm not in the different energy, right? I'm truly just still doing what I do every day. I just may be 2Xing it or 3Xing it than you know, showing up a little more or talking about one thing more than I normally do. I also think it helped um, with launches is that my launches dictate my entire content strategy. 
my content mm-hmm. strategy changes on what I'm selling. So if I'm selling the launch program, all I'm talking about is launches, failed launches, what you think about launches, why or how to get more visible in launches, like everything is so tailored to that. So you literally can't come to my feed and not know that I'm selling a launch program right now because it is it, it's that way for at least two weeks. That's all I'm talking about. And I'm talking about it over and over and over in a million different ways. That is going to be whatever you get to choose what's going to digest for you and what doesn't. I love that. I love that so much. It's, it's genius too, because then you're able to do that on your podcast, uh, you know, everywhere. And then everyone is leading into that. Yeah. Um. So how far ahead do you then have to plan? Like, are you like a year out kind of like, which is like an overview program or, oh my gosh, you're going to tell me like you're just a month ahead. <laughs> are you gonna be like? <laughs> okay. Normally it's month to month. I do oh know what's gosh. happening in July. I have an idea. Like I know mm-hmm. there's a whole program going on in July. And then I know that there are two small programs. I don't have the dates for those yet, but normally here is the thing that I also found out that when I am excited about something, it's time to launch it. Yeah. Don't wait. Go yeah. now. And that's another thing is that we, we most collectively, most of us, we need our eyes dotted. We need mm-hmm. our T's crossed. We need the thing created. We need the videos recorded. We need everything. And by the time it's time for us to launch, we're so freaking exhausted that we don't, we do nothing or yeah. we half ass it because we're so exhausted. And yeah. so that was something that I found. I did a re- totally recorded program. It was a seven week program. Um, at last year, the beginning of last year, and it was the most draining thing ever. And I said, never again, I will pre-sell and I will create live programs for the rest of my life because that was exhausting. And I flopped, I sold, but I still flopped where I wanted to go. Right. And it, and I realized it's because we expend all this energy. And by the time I was done with it, I was tired. I wasn't excited about it. I was tired. And that excitement the more excitement you have, the more confident you are in the thing you're selling, the more you're going to sell 100% every single time. I and so that. it was just a big eye opener for me. Yeah. Um, was I, just gonna, I was just thinking about something along those lines. Uh, oh, well, and one thing that I run into with my own business is when I'm, I'm in that planning thing. I almost then talk about it less when I'm launching because I'm like, everyone must already know about it because it's been in my brain for yeah. months or weeks or whatever. And then I, you know, it like pulls, pulls me back from actually posting and actually launching, like you said. And then you're like, oh yeah, I really did only post about it three times. <laughs> That's why no one knows about it. Yeah. And you know, I mean, I don't think that launching every month is for everyone. That it's a lot, but yeah. it's like, I think it depends on who you are. When I decided I was going to start launching again, because I didn't launch for six months because I was petrified and I was scared Mm -hmm. of failure. I just said, you know what? You know how you get better at anything? You create momentum. Mm -hmm. And the only way I'm going to get better at this is if I do it. And I'm not saying that every launch is successful or the number that I want to get, but I pick myself back up and I do it again and again. And I look at the data and I'm like, what did you do? What did you not do? How are you feeling? Were you energetic? Did you love it? Were you embodying it? Were you talking about it enough? Like I really can separate the drama from the data. And that has helped me so, so much because it's like Chrissy over here. You're the one who did this launch. Right. And I am checking out your work. Right. I'm like the quality control. And I'm like, okay, where did we go wrong? Where Mm -hmm. could I have done better? And I sit with myself and I really work on that. And that has really, really helped. But also the excitement, like If I, um, you know, at the beginning of June, I was like, we're doing two programs this month. I just feel called. I don't even know what one's going to be called, but I'm just going to sell it. Right now it's called a secret offer until I figure out the name of it. I know I want to take three days and I know I want to transform people's lives. That's all I know. That's all I know, but I just feel it in my heart. I need to do this. And so I sold a secret offer. I didn't even know what it was. People didn't really know what it was, but they bought it. And, you know, obviously the price reflects the secret offer because and then when with the more details I got, the more the price went up because the more work I had done and figuring it out. But it was fun and it was exciting and I knew it was going to land. I just didn't know what all it involved at the time. And so some things sometimes things just come to me. I have a plan for July that should pretty much stick. But August, we'll see what happens. I think what will happen is in the month of July, I will see what people need or I'll see something that that I transform or I change or that changes my life during the month of July. And I'll be like, that's the next program. Mm -hmm. And it just becomes because it's anytime I'm embodying something and I see a change, 
in myself or a transformation, I realize that other people need this too. Yeah. Yeah. That's so good. Um, I love how you structure your pricing. Will you share, you just kind of mentioned it a little bit. Um, but I love how you do that. And I haven't seen too many people do it exactly how you do it. Like I've seen like an early bird price and then like, here's a set price. So will you kind of explain what you do to everyone? So, yeah. So basically I do early bird pre-sale and full price. And typically early bird is very early on. I don't have a lot of details. I don't have a date. There is no landing page. There's nothing. Mm -hmm. You're basically, I'm telling you what it is. I may not even have branding at that point. I'm telling you what it is. And that's pretty much it. And you get to say yes or no. And then pre-sell is when, okay, now the landing page has been created. I probably have. So it's almost like the more work I do, the higher the price goes. So if you get in, you trust yourself. I believe action takers are money makers. And so you could save money too. Um, And so pre-sell and then typically full price happens the day the program starts. So after the welcome call, I will typically increase the price because uh, it's a full on program right now. We have people in it. We're starting. The energy is up and it's, it's rewarding people. But also, again, the more work I get to do, the higher the price goes. And so it's, it's been exciting and it's funny because Sometimes nobody buys early bird pre-sale and they'll pay full price. And sometimes people buy early bird pre-sale and no full price. So it's really interesting, just like even the data with that and watching what people choose to do. Um, Sometimes full price doesn't sell as often because I stop talking about it or start talking about something else. So it's really interesting. Like I literally should just keep a journal of all this stuff because this data is like so fascinating on what people do, but also a lot of it stems from what I do, yeah. what am I doing? How am I showing up? How much am I talking about it? So it's it's a really it's a really interesting thing, and I love it. And um, yeah, I just want to do more of it. I'm going to start doing more, but like even further out than just like a couple weeks. I'm because yeah. I know things are coming up. Mm-hmm. I always repeat my. Um, my signature programs. So if I know that we're going to do raving fans in the fall, I could literally start selling it at early bird. Right. Yeah. yeah. I love that. I love that so much. Um, I know. Cause, and when I took, I forget what the program was called that I took with you. Um, but you showed how, and I actually didn't know how to make a, like the landing page inside of, was it square or PayPal? Um, it was, uh, or Stripe. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I, and I use Stripe, but I just integrate Stripe with my Kajabi. So I've never, and I've always like taken the time to make like a full, you know, thing on, on there. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so much easier yeah. to make a landing page right on Stripe. Like it literally took you two seconds to make that. And I was yeah. like, wow, this is life changing. <laughs> yeah. And it's, yeah, it's like, yeah. And I believe like, obviously the more I have to sit down and do the work, the price reflects that. And yeah. it's, it's really, you know, and so people who say, So this is for everybody listening. I don't have a website. I don't have a landing page. I don't have funnel software. I don't have this. I don't have that. You're just telling yourself that. That's the story Mm -hmm. you're telling yourself. You don't need that. I sell so much with just a link, with just a PayPal link or a Stripe link. It's easy. It all starts in your content. And literally by the time they get to your landing page, they should be, they already know they're going to buy anyhow. So that's the way that I sell. Yeah. I love that. I mean, it's, it's, you simplify it you simplify all of it. Like it's such a yeah. simple process. It doesn't have to yeah. be difficult. Um, okay. Last thing I want to talk about, cause I know your program right now is, I believe it's called activation activation mm-hmm. events. Is that what yes. it's about? Okay. Um, so I'm assuming if people are listening, maybe they can still hop in if they're yeah. listening live. Okay. Um, explain a little bit super quickly, what is an activation event and maybe how you've used those in your business? So I believe an activation event is the, the the excitement that comes before we launch something or the excitement that comes. Maybe we have like a recurring thing that doesn't have like doors closed. Right. But it just creates that initial excitement. Um, I create activation events because, number one, people get to see who you are, how you coach, how you mentor, how you teach in a very impactful amount of time. So if you're doing like an hour masterclass. You get people's attention. They're paying attention. It's easy to say, if you want what's next, here's what's next, right? Here's how to work with me further on. If not, take the knowledge that I teach you in this free thing, this free challenge or masterclass and run with it and keep doing it. Um, I believe it's a great way to find out who your raving fans are or to create more raving fans really fast. Because when we think about content, there's so much noise, right? So 
if somebody needs 20 to 50 pieces of content to convert, uh, they're probably not seeing your content every single day, right? Unless they stalk you, which that can happen. Um, but how long will that take? If it's 50 times, the odds are they may not even see 50 pieces of content in 60 days because of the algorithm, right? So right. when I can get them into a container to see what it's like, how it, how it runs, how I remind you that it's coming up, all the things that I do, they get like, a, it's almost like a, pre, a free trial. If you think about it like that, it's like a free trial of being in a container with me, how I talk, how I operate, how I do things. And so I believe, number one, the excitement always starts with us, but I feed off of that energy even more when that is happening, when people show up, when new people come into my world, when new people are like, when they do my challenges and they're like taking action and they're getting like results, like fast results, like that feeds into me even more and creates so much, not only excitement, but also people, you don't realize it when they do these things, they also sell for you because they're talking about it. They're sharing it. They're showing up with excitement. And so there's so much, so many dualities in this. It increases your visibility, increases your excitement. It increases the attention that you're getting right before the launch. So there are many different ways to create an activation event and they can be in person and online and challenges and masterclasses and workshops. And if you want to call them webinars, um, but it's vital for, it's like the kickoff. It's like the preview that happens before a movie, a big movie, right? It's like people going around and um, showing up on different shows. And it's a great way to get people that aren't aware of who you are um, and people who have been not giving you the instant gratification of content, you know, of commenting on your content um, to show up and see. And sometimes they're still quiet there too, but they still get to see what happens. And that when I convert, that is always my highest conversion in the activation event to the paid offer. Um, and sometimes they're low cost activation events, but most of the time they're free because you're also building your list at the same time. And we all know that's an asset you get to keep when social media goes down, when you get blocked from your account, like all these things. Um, so it's to me, activation events are win wins because they're just going to help your launch and help promote your launch even more. I love that. That's a beautiful explanation. Um, do you have a sweet spot for your activation events? Cause I've heard some people say they like five day ones. Um, I had a coach one time tell me seven to nine days and I was like, Whoa, that is a very long activation event. So I'm just curious you personally, what have you seen to be most successful? So I think for, if I'm doing like a challenge three to five days, yeah, three to five days max, because typically I obviously am talking to entrepreneurs and business owners. We all are way too busy. We are busy, right? It's just all there is to it. So the shorter amount of time I can keep it, I typically see people start dropping off at day three, mm -hmm. which is why I always start seeding on day three. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, I really like our masterclasses too, just because they're impactful and there's a lot of information and it gives you an opportunity to do Q&A and see what questions people have and really get to know them a little bit more intimately if you do them on Zoom or like webinar software or something like that. So so yeah, I say three to five days, although I'm doing a paid one in July, that's going to be the entire month of July, but also it can lead to other things, right? So yeah. it's I think it's going to be, and, and we're also, July is the month I always uh, give back to NC4K the pediatric, pediatric cancer foundation. So that's also going to be part of that. So, so oh, yeah. Cool. So, but on a normal basis, on a free one, three to five days works wonders. So you don't even need like to like, Oh my God, I got to prepare for this. Like, you know, we get in launch mode, same thing with the challenge. You don't need to like be on all the time. Yeah. Um, and it was, it's, it's crazy because my last five day challenge I did um, three days before is when I started inviting people. Now, most people I, Thank you to do seven to 10 days. But I was yeah. like, I need to create something to create excitement. I'm going to be two days with my inner circle. I'm going to be quieter on social media. How can I create more excitement? And I literally mm -hmm. like leveraged and used that as a strategy. And it blew my mind and resulted in thousands of dollars in sales afterwards. That's amazing. So you only invited for three days. That's so crazy. Three days. Three days. Um, I think you all, I think one of the things we miss out on. Now there's two ways you can do this. I said, invite one person. Mm -hmm. Um, but a lot of challenges I'll say, invite as many people as you want. I think when we say invite as many people as you want, it can get very, um, 
you know, convoluted, like very just like messy because a lot of people get invited that don't want to be there. Mm -hmm. um, so I said specifically invite one person that you think needs to do this challenge or you want to do this challenge with. And so mm -hmm. that was a real game changer. And I think I may do that more yeah. going forward because they're very intentional with the person that they invite versus if I say it's a free for all fight everybody, you know, that's right. a little crazier. Um, yeah. But you can use a free challenge and use that as part of like your points or your giveaway if you want to get even more people in. But yeah, three days, email list. Uh, I didn't, I don't think I ran ads for that one, but email list, putting out on my social media and then encouraging people to take their I'm in banner and invite other people to it was mm -hmm. a huge huge support too. And did you do a giveaway then if they shared that in their stories or whatnot? So I did a giveaway. So it was a whole point system over the five days. So okay. whoever got the most points. So I, and this is the other thing that you can do in activation events. I think is really cool is that you can pay. So I did a hundred dollar gift card, which I paid for, right? I didn't have to do that. You, I gave a year to my just one thing program and a 30 minute uh, coaching call. So you can, it's either your time or your money that right. you can give away. So you get to choose. Or if you're like a product-based business, you could give away a product. So there's a lot of things you can do. Um, you just get to decide. I do a combination because sometimes mm -hmm. people get really excited. Um, you know, yeah. and sometimes let's be honest, people want the gift, the gift card, and they have no intentions of working with you. And you get to set with that and be okay with that too. Yeah. And I think that's important too. Like, don't be like <laughs> hateful toward people for doing that and then not converting or whatnot. Like yeah. again, just being okay exactly. with it regardless yeah. of the outcome. Yes. Oh my gosh, Chrissy, this was so good. Everyone's going to need to bookmark this episode, come back to it, share with a friend. So tell us all the things that are going on right now in your world. I know there are like 18 million <laughs> of them probably, um, but how can everyone connect with you? How can they work with you further? Tell us all the things. Okay. So what's going on in my world right now is obviously activation program that is, uh, ends the end of this month. And then, um, in July, we're doing just one thing live. So just one thing used to be a text, but now it is a 60 second video. That's a strategy coaching, um, mentorship tactic act, like action step that you get to do every single day. So people get this, um, in their phone, but during the month of July, we're doing Just One Thing Live. And so Just One Thing Live is not only about listening to the tip, but it's going to have a huge focus on implementation and points are going to come from actually implementing. So okay. I'm super excited about that. And during the whole month of July, I'm going to have two micro programs, which are going to be smaller programs, like three days. But 10% um, of all the proceeds are going to go to NC4K from just one thing, anything you buy from me in the month of July is going to, there's a percentage you're going to go to pediatric cancer foundation. So that is like always in my heart. Um, the month of July is normally my uncomfortable month. So I'm also going to be pushing everybody that works with me <laughs> during the month of July to get really uncomfortable because that's how you grow. And yep. July is, you know, I did a hundred lives in July in 2020, 2021, I did 200 lives in July. And last summer I did a hundred uncomfortable actions during the summer. So it is a way to really like push yourself. And sometimes we think things are slow in the summer. Yeah. Um, and it's just like I told my momentum group, they don't have to be slow with you. Maybe sales aren't where you want them to be, but you get to decide how much you're going to show up and you don't have to be slow in the summer. And it doesn't mean you have to spend all day on social media either. Yeah. You can yeah. still create a really big business and do a lot within an hour a day. And it's amazing how much you can do if you give yourself permission and don't get so in your head about it. Yeah. Um, okay. Where can you find me? I am. It's Chrissy Connor almost everywhere. And the visibility queen.com has information about all my programs and my free, uh, guide to, uh, help you get visible as an introvert. And also my podcast links on there as well. Oh my gosh. So many good things. Um, and guys, I have personally worked with Chrissy and a, a variety of her programs. Um, and then you have Omni as well, right? That's yeah. Your, so Omni your VIP is that's where you get everything except the close proximity to me. So you get all the monthly programs, um, mm -hmm. a weekly call, uh, there's one Q and a a month, and then there's always a monthly challenge that you get as well. Awesome. Yeah. So I can totally vouch. Chrissy is amazing. Go find her, work with her, um, talk to her some more. And again, Chrissy, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. So welcome.